So do you recognize the following things? You're a people pleaser. You have the need to talk a lot and to feel every silence there is. You're overthinking and overanalyzing. You have a hard time saying no. You have the tendency to compare yourself to others. You're ruminating a lot and thinking, what if? Worrying about the future. You're expecting the worst outcomes. You're very loyal to other people. You're afraid of failing others. You're busy all the time and you have trouble relaxing. But despite all these things, it really looks like you have your shit together. Other people would maybe describe you as hardworking even, or a perfectionist, or very charismatic and bubbly and outgoing. So if you recognize this combination that if internally you feel a lot of, yeah, a lot of anxiety, but on the outside it looks like you have it all together, then maybe you are someone with high functioning anxiety. So people with high functioning anxiety, they appear very calm on the outside, but on the inside there's a lot going on. So it looks like you have your shit together and you can come across as very confident and accomplished, but internally you are very stressed and very anxious. Since high functioning anxiety is not a DSM-5 diagnosis, there isn't a lot of research done on this topic. So why isn't this then a diagnosis in the DSM-5? And remember the DSM-5, that is the tool that a lot of psychologists or psychiatrists use to diagnose someone with a certain disorder. Someone has to kind of check certain boxes if we say that they have a certain diagnosis or a certain disorder. And with the high functioning anxiety, it isn't an official diagnosis. So why isn't that the case then? Because when we discuss the symptoms, people really struggle with this. So maybe you remember that I discussed the fight or flight response in one of my former videos. And the fight or flight response is a response that we have in a stressful situation. And that's a very normal response. And it's a response that helps us to survive. The main difference between high functioning anxiety and someone with, for example, a generalized anxiety disorder is that with the latter, so with the generalized anxiety disorder, people have the tendency to flee the situation. So they don't want to be in a stressful situation um, and their reaction is to uh, or flee the situation, so to get out of there or to avoid it altogether. And in general, people with high functioning anxiety, they also have that anxiety, uh, but instead they choose to stay in the situation and to fight it. So they are really consciously fighting what they're feeling inside and they're still choosing to stay in that stressful situation. So they endure the anxiety. They still get things done, but they're also really busy masking their symptoms because they want to come across as accomplished, which they then do most of the time. Also, a lot of the time, people around them don't really have a clue what's going on inside because when they look at them from the outside, they see someone that's very perfectionist, but also very charismatic and funny and confident maybe, and they have no idea what's going on inside. And this even makes it harder for people with high functioning anxiety to talk about what they're feeling, because a lot of the times people around them won't really take them seriously because it looks like they have their shit together. So other characteristics that I found that are typical of people with high functioning anxiety is that they tend to seek control by being high achieving. They can be really fixated on having certain milestones or being really productive. They will do anything to not let other people down. And they're really focused on their own routines and their habits, and they can be kind of rigid. And some people also show these nervous tics um, so that is the flight response that is still happening in the body, but they choose to stay in the situation. Um, but it does show in, for example, tapping with the foot or some people that are really like clicking with their pens or uh, twirling with their hair. You do notice that kind of nervous tics with people and it does show that there is something going on on the inside that they don't really want to show on the outside. But it is happening, there is anxiety going on in the body. So while high functioning anxiety isn't an official diagnosis, it is something you have to take seriously because it really takes a toll on your physical and on your mental health. So it's really important to assess for yourself if the anxiety levels that you're having 
uh, are working for you or against you. And some levels of anxiety are completely fine. It can even help us to accomplish certain goals or be really productive. But it is important that the anxiety doesn't become too much so that it is working against you. So maybe it's important to make some changes in your life. And maybe it's a good idea to, for example, start therapy or read books about it or inform yourself uh, on the topic or to yeah really take a serious look at your life and try to make some changes and it's really important also to be honest towards yourself i know especially when we still get things done it's really easy to kind of lie to ourselves and to say look at all the things that i'm doing and i'm doing fine right and i don't need any help and i'm completely okay and i also think that you know that it costs you a lot uh, and in that case it is time to yeah seek the help that you deserve okay that's it for today on the topic of high functioning anxiety uh, there's a lot more to say about this topic, uh, but this is just a brief introduction. It would be interesting to know if you maybe recognize yourself in the things that I just discussed or what your thoughts are on this topic, what you think maybe the solution is to this, if you maybe recognize yourself in the things I just discussed, uh, and maybe if you guys have any tips also on this topic for people with high functioning anxiety, that would be amazing. And I hope I see you next time again. Bye.